welcome PCS members, uh, welcome our friends to our PCS IBS seminar. Today we have a pleasure of hosting Professor Danko Radic from University of Zagreb in Croatia. And uh, Professor Radic is a regular uh, visitor here, and uh, he is also a participant of the advanced study group on the quantum functional mesoscopic weak links whose convener is Professor Robert Schechter, and I would ask Professor Schechter to introduce our speaker. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to introduce this presenter today. I'm sure most of you know him because of his many visits here, and uh, a lot of the stuff he is eager to participate in very actively behave here. So Danka is professor in uh, Zagreb University. He was graduated in, in, in 1997, and then his PhD is from 2006. Uh, since that, he actively working in several areas, like powers and uh, system with broken symmetry, trash density, spin density waves. And then uh, very important was his visit to Sweden where he spent four years being a postdoc first at Utah University, then in Chalmers University. And this was a very critical period when he was getting involved in nanoelectromechanics and single electronics, and uh, was uh, working with many members of that group. And then he continued this line, joining our strategic group here at uh, IBS here, which he, where he's working was very fruitful and, uh, and useful. So he's, he's continued to be interested in uh, uh, nanoelectronics and nanoelectromechanics. But the last year, his focus was shifted towards superconducting nanomechanics, where we can uh, uh, explode uh, microscopic quantum coherence of electrons and quantum coherence of phonons together in order to achieve new interesting effects. And some of these effects he will talk about today in this talk, which is nanomechanical control of superconducting charge field networks. So very welcome to your presentation. Thank you very much, Robert. So, as you mentioned, uh, this activity uh, now aims to uh, quantum networks is one of the goals of the research conducted here within this one study group. And uh, people who are or have been involved in these projects are here. Many of them you know well. Sang Jun, uh, beside myself, Sang Jun used to be a postdoc here, teacher one was one of the team leaders. June Cook collaborates with IBS for a number of years. Robert and Monia are for every legends here. No need to introduce them, especially. Probably you don't know Sergei Kulinic, uh, who is uh, performing his uh, brilliant analytical calculation sitting in Kharkov, Ukraine, in the middle of the war, which I find amazing. And Matya uh, was my uh, graduate student who performed some simulations and improved the result. Uh, so <clears throat> quantum networks uh, I will speak about have nothing to do with quantum internet. No quantum computers connected with some quantum wires. Now, from the perspective of a physicist, for us it is a set of qubits and some common mean which relates them, enabling them to come into entanglement. Now this mean which connects them, in our case, will be nanomechanics. Okay. So first thing first, we need to go gradually to establish our quantum network. First, we need to build our qubit and entangle and explain what will be uh, what will need entanglement inside. Okay, <clears throat> the setup that we suggest consists of two superconducting leads biased by voltage B, which creates phase superconducting phase difference phi between them. Between them, there is either a counter lever or this 
suspended beam, which are uh, capable of performing nanomechanical operations on the top of the control lever or attached to the beam. There is a superconducting mesoscopic island, which is by the influence of the skate voltage, electrostatic influence, uh, it is brought into the regime of so called Cooper pair box. Now, there appears <coughs> a tunneling of Cooper pairs between the leads and the grain. And this is so called AC Josephson effect. And this tunneling, these amplitudes are position dependent as the I uh, vibrates, changes its position. Uh, it is important, this position dependency of tunneling amplitudes. Now, uh, what I will show is that there appears a force acting both on orbit and on this nanomechanical system. Uh, and this force brings the nanomechanical subsystem in Hilbert space with entanglement with the qubit subsystem in the Hilbert space. So this would mean entanglement in our case. Okay, just a short reminder, what is super pair box? So imagine that you have superconducting grain with n electrons exposed to the gate voltage. Now there is a unique property of such system, it's called parity effect, which means that uh, the electrostatic energy of the system with even number of electrons is lower by delta, delta is the size of superconducting gap with respect to the system with odd number of electrons. Here from the expression for this electrostatic energy, we see that the manipulation of gate voltage, this number, for example, setting it to some value, we can <clears throat> achieve that the state with n Cooper pairs and one extra Cooper pair are the generative energy. So the wave function will be superposition of these two states. And this is in the, in the shortest possible way uh, definition of what we assume to be a charge qubit or a Cooper pair box. It basically it is a two level system. Uh, also, a short reminder about Josephson junction. So we have two superconductors. They are biased, biased by bias voltage. They are characterized by the phase left and right. There is an insulating barrier between them. Cooper pairs are tunneling through. <clears throat> the evolution of the phase difference is given by known Josephson relation. This what appears here is so called Josephson frequency, and it is determined by the bias voltage. Phase okay. operator. May I ask you a question in the previous uh, slide? Uh, uh, you uh, wrote the uh, uh, focus uh, uh, stage, but uh, uh, I think that this the spoken up in gray, uh, the number of the Cooper pair is still a good quantum number, right? The number of Cooper pair. Number of so Cooper pair. It, it, if it is in connection with the superconducting lead, then, then you yes. can. Yes, so the, uh, the this the position actually assume that uh, you yes couple uh, yes. the grain yes. in the yes. so that your field of space enables yes. state with n and n plus one Cooper pairs. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so they are conjugated. So the eigenstate of the phase it can be conveniently expressed in the number basis. The phase operator. Also, we can express in a number of basis. It is convenient writing because it enables us, us to track the tunneling processes of Cooper pairs between the leads and the grain. Uh, the tunneling amplitudes to the left and to the right from the grain are uh, position dependent. This is characteristic exponential dependence. We can expand that function in terms of small parameter. This is the ratio of zero point uh, mechanical oscillations and tunneling length. So it is, um, let's say, picometer over angstrom, 10 to minus two, 10 to minus one. So expanding these uh, functions, we can construct the tunneling Hamiltonian <coughs> in terms of this amplitude. So we see tracking the process of tunneling from the left lead to the grain and back, right lead to the grain <coughs> and back with corresponding amplitude and combining the symmetric combination of the terms become with a term characterized by cosine of by superconducting phase difference characterized by Josephson energy and coming in this effective two by two Hilbert space of qubit just qubit sigma x poly matrix and there appears the anti-symmetric term coming in sine of five and there appear 
the X operator, position operator, which acts in mechanical space, multiplied by polymatrix sigma Y, which acts in qubit space. So it means there is coupling between these two subsystems characterized by small parameter epsilon. Okay, now finally, the Hamiltonian on the whole system, left lead, right lead, Cooper pair box, tunnel between them and uh, gate potential. The Hamiltonian is Hamiltonian on the leads, plus Hamiltonian of uh, the gate potential, which controls the charging energy of the system, plus Hamiltonian of the uh, harmonic oscillator. In principle, it can vibrate in two directions, in X and Y directions. And finally, the tunneling Hamiltonian, which I just explained on the previous slide. So the wave function of the system will be the direct product of the uh, wave functions in the leads. And this is the wave function, the Cooper pair box. We see here that there are product states of the nanomechanical state with Cooper pair box, qubit state, the other nanomechanical state, the other qubit state, and this product is brought into a combination which is inseparable. This inseparable combination of two systems, it is in them. <clears throat> okay, the case we choose to study from this general Hamiltonian is described by the Hamiltonian down there. For a, uh, to save some time, I will not go into analysis of all possible uh, all possibilities. So it is this Josephson term. This is one dimensional, so we choose to find it only in x direction, one dimensional harmonic oscillator, and this is coupling between these two subsystems. We can <clears throat> obtain numerical solution, I analyze this problem numerically, and we do it in the box space. So it is the space of uh, harmonic oscillator states, this is n, and qubit states. So, sorry. Uh... I ask you this question. If you want to solve some numerics, mm -hmm. so you have to choose some initial condition. Yes. Yeah, and which condition is uh, You mean which initial state I choose? Oh, yes. I will come to that. So uh, this will be the state from which we will oh, okay. come to a line of volume. Yes. So I will show how this Hamiltonian looks on the next slide in this phases. What we will do, as, as Lonnie asked, we will, based on this Hamiltonian, we will find time evolution operator. It is done in the standard way for the Eric's. You discretize time and then solve piecewise, then combine all these pieces together, and you find uh, the time evolution operator. So now, initial positions, which will be taken into account, is ground state of nanomechanical oscillator. It is important. It has to be the ground state for our aim, for what we want to calculate. Has to be the ground state of the harmonic oscillator and some qubit state. It is not so important which one you choose, each one will develop in its own way. But in order to achieve what I will show, it should be the ground state or harmonic oscillator. Okay, now this is how this Hamiltonian looks like in the basis that I uh, proposed. These terms are written inside and they take care of population number of this uh, harmonic oscillator states. Now, Wave function is characterized by two sets of coefficients. We will find them diagonalizing the problem, obeying all symmetries of the problem. So one symmetry that appears here, it is that Hamiltonian commutes with the parity operator. It means that only one class of coefficient is enough to describe the wave function. Okay, and when we do that diagonalization, we come to interesting a uh, result. So <clears throat> first we look into the resonant case when mechanical frequency is in resonance with Josephson frequency. This intensity, this is proportional uh, to the size of C and coefficients depending on time and the state for which we calculate. So <clears throat> this intensity shows that states as you develop in time follow the, the Probability follows some approximately p squared law. Now, if you make a time cuts here to this system and show this profile, it is, for example, 100 periods, this CN coefficient, depending on n, the population goes like this. And for 200, after 200 periods, 
goes like this, and then it develops further. If you calculate a plot in a logarithm of square root n factorials multiplied by cn versus n, you get the straight line. Now, this shows this is an indication that our solution is what we know as a coherent state. This is eigen state of uh, on an annihilation <laughs> operator, and this alpha here it is actually the inclination of this line between of the here. Uh, if we project this solution to classical phase space, so momentum coordinate, we start in the ground state, and we see how this develops, how, how classical solution develops in time. So its amplitude grows linear in time. This is a nice indication of resonant current state. And these features here appear due to nonlinear redistribution and consumption of energy between qubits and nanomechanics. If you calculate the non-resonant case, so here we made just 1%, just 1% mismatch in resonance. You see what's the difference, how different the solution is. You don't get this resonance uh, picture. You get some state which is localized around the ground state. Most likely these are classical beats, which you typically get when you have mismatch in driving frequency in the frequency of the oscillator. Yeah, yes, when you do numerically the solving your equation, then the some higher energy levels, for example, the old parent to that of the electrons, you ignore the beginning. What do you mean by that? All number of uh, electrons. Uh, you, you only consider the the degenerate uh, electrons, yes, the yes. n and the n plus two and the n plus one. For example, the five giants that ignore because the uh, the band uh, yes. of the uh, at the uh, high in energy, but uh, in this the uh, uh, time dependent system. Uh, but can you? How do we justify the this the higher uh, stage? You need to be all the time. You need to be within that, and then you are safe. If you are operating inside interval of delta, super so yeah, that's yes, you don't need to frequency frequencies much less. Those yeah, that, yes, the, my point is that in your numerics, uh, uh, can you justify these uh, statements the, or the numerics that you uh, simply ignore the, uh, is the uh, what do you mean, the, can I simulate a violation yes. of... Is it included or no? No, it's not. No, no. no. I just wonder in your numerics, uh, can you estimate uh, some, some effect of this uh, high level In, in principle, it might be possible, but we didn't do it. I especially this is this is actually San Jones uh, very good work with this. So may I also ask a question, mm -hmm. please? Um, here you have a mismatch of one percent. Yes. Or what will happen, for example, if I have one one thousandth part of one percent or something like that? Yes, that, that that's uh, that's a good question. Uh, so uh, you know when you when you have beats, then you have two frequencies. Then if this mismatch, there is a difference of frequencies, if it is small, you can expand. You can expand side function. So there appears then something which is linear in time and multiply with this difference in frequency. So the smaller different delta omega is, the, the, the longer time which is valid for this approximation is available. So it means if you have very, very small frequency, then you can operate in the linear in time Amplitude, so in practically keep resonance, uh, resonant condition for a longer time. I mean, this is exactly what we are aiming. We can, I will show, we can uh, control bias voltage up to 0.1% by some instrument which is which will be specified here. And uh, it means that we will, all we, what we want to do is to do everything in some inside the shortest decoherence time of the system. If you can do it. You are saying, and we are aiming to do it. I will show that later. So, in, in this numeric, uh, 
with the non resonant clays, you see that it go deep for every hundred periods. The reason is one is hundred because one over 0 0.01, right? You mean this, this, this deep here? Yeah. Yeah. The deep is like you, the different is, is, is one over it, this, this, is, this is the frequency of beats. Yeah. So I would say that uh, you are right. Intuitively, you are right. Yes. Uh, so, uh, as I said, to understand what is going on, we develop analytical solution of the problem, starting with the same Hamiltonian, non interacting part is the same direction, alternating time evolution operator uh, using a rotating wave approximation here and treating only the resonant case. So, mechanical frequency is some integer number multiplied by Josephson frequency. And what we get here, are two classes of solution for time evolution operator. So as, as you see here, for odd multipliers, you get this evolution operator. It is linear in time here in this exponent. It contains a momentum operator, which is shift operator in mechanical shift operator coordinate. Then there is uh, operator sigma y, which operates in a qubit subspace. <laughs> Coupling is here characterized by small parameter and this R, this AL, is where all these complicated integrals go. And in the end of the day, it turns out that they generate Bessel functions. So you can give the solution with the rotating wave approximation, resonant case in the closed form. This coefficient depends on sign of your bias voltage. This is important because this shift operator will act in one or the opposite direction, depending on the sign of the bias voltage. This, this we will use heavily uh, in the end of my talk. The other class for uh, even numbers, it has X operator. It is a shift operator for momentum in mechanical space and sigma Z operator in input space. Uh, so again, we start with, uh, with uh, the initial condition, which has a zero components, some complete state. And what we obtain, what we obtain in the resonance case with L equal one, we obtain indeed coherent state, product state, coherent states, coherent states, which are in them. So to understand better, to illustrate better in the easier way, what is the structure of the wave function, let us calculate, let us calculate the wave function after integer number of periods. So for integer number of periods, this evolution is given by a rather simple uh, expression here, so we act with this evolution operator to the ground state, and what we get is the following. So this is one qubit state, e minus. This is another qubit state with overall e plus. And this object here, if you, for example, <coughs> take away this psi m, it will be the profile of the ground state of harmonic host. Now, this shift operator adds mid, and you see that one qubit is uh, multiplied by this profile shifted in one direction, and the other is this profile shifted in opposite direction. This type of function is by definition reconstruction coherent state, and this is exactly <clears throat> how you how the wave function in the end looks. So it has one qubit multiplied by coherent state shifted in one direction, and the other qubit coherent state shifted by the same amount in the opposite direction. This shift is proportional to small parameter with this coefficient that we calculated, and this n is the discrete time. So it is linear proportional in time. It is our resonant, uh, analogous to our resonant classical solution, which grows linearly in time. Okay, so this combination, as I said, it is in time state, it is still not a cat state. So, <clears throat> how do we get our kittens? and turn them into the cats. We need to operate the parameters of the system we have at hand. In our case, it is bias voltage. So what we do after n periods, we switch off bias voltage and keep it switched off during one period of time. By switching off the bias voltage, we uh, decouple nanomechanical subsystem from qubit, so the coherent states do not grow anymore. They just rotate from unitary rotation, and this rotation is characterized by this row at tau, let's call them scattering amplitudes. They look, they look like that. 
So they depend on Josephson ratio, Josephson energy, and mechanical energy. So they will rotate this angle. And then after this one period, we switch the bus voltage on again. And what we get is the following structure of the wave function. Now, each qubit, the first one and the second one, is multiplied by superposition of two coherent states shifted in the opposite directions. So this one and this one. Uh, to illustrate this, it is what we have in the beginning. Then we wait for n periods. And then we switch it off for one period, switch it on for n periods. And this is semantically what happens. It's not entirely correct. I will show what happens correctly later. Okay, to understand uh, what is what happened, uh, one needs to calculate the linear function of the system. In order to do that, you need to calculate the density matrix. It is constructed from the wave function that we have calculated. Then you calculate so called reduced density matrix, uh, mechanical reduced density matrix by tracing out COVID decreased freedom. And what you get is standard, what you can see in the density matrix formalism. So projectors with the same uh, coherent states, which come with the uh, squares of probability amplitude, so with probabilities, and it is really. And then here with this mixed term, there comes projectors of different states. It smells mm -hmm. like trouble, but we need to realize what kind of trouble it is. Okay, <clears throat> now Wigner function. It is how it is calculated by knowing the reduced density matrix. Now Wigner function is a quasi-distribution function, and it can obtain negative values. Uh, these negative values uh, are indicators of quantum superposition, if you want, of the interference spectrum. Now, nothing special about that. All quantum systems have these negative values, unless now I want Andrew, quote Andrew Cleland from two, three years ago here in Dejan, it's not unless the system is coherent state. Now, indeed, if you have coherent state, Wigner function is this nice motion shape as positive as it can be. <laughs> and it enters, this object enters into the structure of our Wigner function of our system. So, yes, this which comes with squares of probability amplitude, so probability, this is really positive structure. But this mixed term introduces something which can change sign. So, if you want to track it graphically, this is what you do. So, you switch it on uh, the bias voltage, they, the, these two peaks develop they, in time, uh, they form these two peaks, then you switch off for one period bias voltage, switch it on after one period for n periods, and what you get is this. So this is this splitting, and these split peaks between them, there appears something which has negative parts, and this is the indicator of quantum superposition. But quantum superposition of two classical objects what can I say about classical objects? Uh, and this is what I dare to call the cat state. Super, superposition, quantum superposition of two classical objects of opposite nature. So I know that Schrodinger, actually I have a cat, I don't like this analogy, allegory with cat, cat, living cat. Uh, this is my cat, uh, I like good cat and angry cat. And these negative parts of Wigner function are proved that, that heads are in a superposition of good and angry state and number of scratches. Real cats. Yeah. Real cats are always visual. I have experimental proof yes. of the number of scratches and bricks and right. hands are exactly. experimental proof that cats are always <laughs> in a superposition of bipolar personality disorder. <laughs> but I love them because of that. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> So this is now how we got the cat state. And this is how they develop. So we start in the ground state, then uh, let the system evolve. These are two peaks. This is the entangled state. Then we switch off the voltage that this interference patterns appear. Then we switch fast voltage again. They start to rotate further and get further away from each other in the phase space. Okay, now your question. How realistic is all this uh, experimental feasibility of this? Uh, I will not talk in detail about it unless I'm specifically asked. This is not the topic of, of our of this presentation, but in order to publish the first paper, we've made a lot of discussions with experiments, experimentalists about uh, fabrication of this system. 
uh, two configurations are possible. For example, this is done by coating the carbon nanotube with niobium or aluminium, and you need to have the island which is big enough to preserve superconductivity. It is doable. It is doable given dimensions and mass. This uh, is calculated and even even observed. Then your question about mismatch in in uh, in frequency, resonant frequency. This is the resonant case. And these are classical beats. So you see, if you are close enough with your resonance, and uh, you have longer time to to live in the resonant uh, conditions. So I will then then we simulated the processes of decoherence, for example, phonon loss process in the processors and charge charge qubit flip process. So I will not go into that after all these simulations. I will just present the uh, list of parameters under which we think that this is experimentally uh, feasible. So qubit decoherence time, it is the most crucial thing. It is today tops one microsecond. It used to be 10 to minus seven, so 0 0.1. How does it's one microsecond. Mechanical quality factor 10 to 4 or better. It's not a problem. This is doable. Typical Josephson energies are really 0 0.1 to 1 Kelvin. Tunneling length, as I said, is uh, one angstrom. Mass of the Cooper pair box 10 to minus 22, minus 21 kilograms. This is island dimensions of this coated island around nanotube. Zero point oscillation amplitude picometer. Interaction coupling, I said 10 to minus 2, 10 to minus 1. Bias voltage controlled 10 microvolts, controlled to 0.1% by this device. I've checked it was three years ago. Uh, nowadays, they can do even better. Mechanical frequency of fundamental low 1 gigahertz. If you want to do better, if you are skilled enough, you can excite third family mode at 10 gigahertz. To put the long story short, what we can do is to have, to fulfill all of this, we can have well-resolved coherent states within estimation of 10 to 2, up to 10 to 3 periods of mechanical oscillation. So it is 10 to 2, 10 to 3 uh, amplitudes of zero point oscillation. Good. Now that we have our qubits and our cats, we can play a bit with them and go to the next uh, step in building our quantum network. It is transduction of quantum information between qubit subsystem and cat states. So you want to make a point about this, that the coherence time you wrote in the previous the slide. Mm -hmm. uh, is this the uh, uh, relaxation time or the diffusion time? Diffusion. Diffusion. Uh, I mean, the, uh, in order to see your uh, resulting experiment, uh, you mean this, uh, uh, the phase should be yes. maintained uh, in this uh, time scale. Yes, yes. Even first, if you want to preserve accurate quantum information, which I will explain now, uh, you need to preserve this phase. Because otherwise, you can. Ever, okay, I will. I will come to that. I will. I will reflect to this question. So. First, what I mean by quantum information, nothing like uh, about what uh, Leonard Sanskin and Stephen Hawking started the Black Hole War. So it has nothing to do with, with losing of information, conservation. It is, for me, very down to earth. If I have two-level system, I, have, I can prepare the state, quantum state, in their superposition, characterized by two complex amplitudes. So alpha. First state plus beta. Second state is alpha, beta, these amplitudes are what that is what I call the quantum information. So they have phase. And if you have some qubit dephasing, these phases add up into my into the phase of my alpha and beta, and I don't have accurate uh, process of dealing with quantum information. Now, transduction. Transduction means to convert something. For example, uh, piezoelectric sensors, they transduct mechanical motion into electrical signal. Our dynamic electromechanical system transduct bias voltage into mechanical motion. Here, I speak about converting this quantum information, this sum uh, of quantum, quantum uh, 
uh, this sum of, of, of uh, superposition of two states from one subsystem move it into nano mechanics. This is uh, what I aim to do. Now, schematically, what I will do to have these two complex amplitudes, encode them into the Cooper pair box, so it's a two level system, alpha one plus beta two, preform the time protocol of dealing and operating the device that I propose, and prepare the entangled state of Cooper pair box and coherent states containing this information on this mishmash, and then further on, I will end up with a pure state of mechanical subsystem. So I will have a superposition of coherent states, pure superposition of coherent states with single qubit state, single down. So start with the pure qubit state and the pure mechanical state, and inverting the time process backwards, I can go back. Okay, <clears throat> so the setup is quite similar uh, to the previous one. Again, this is this AC Josephson setup superconductor. Uh, vibrating beam Cooper pair box, but the gate, well, the gate electrodes are here set in the more sophisticated way. You need to put them in the symmetric uh, configuration. VG is always present here. This is the gate voltage which creates the Cooper pair box. So it provides that this superconducting grain is in the Cooper pair box region. But we can add delta V in this symmetric way. Uh, why? In the middle of the junction, the potential due to this delta V is a zero, so it doesn't harm the pair box, but it creates electric field. And then there is electrostatic energy, which is this field multiplied by displacement, and it can change sign. So in one direction, it is one sign, and in the opposite direction, it is the opposite sign. So we will use that fact heavily because its action on Cooper pair box states will be rotating them in one direction and the other one in the opposite direction. This is how we will operate with the Cooper pair uh, box states. So soon I will show how we do it. <clears throat> okay, what is our motivation and goal of this story? First of all, we know that charge qubit is easy to manipulate a Okay, but it is uh, the main uh, the main cruise uh, imposed on charge qubit is exactly less sensitivity and due to interaction with the environment, it has very short decoherence time. So what we want to do is to use its wood side and encode the quantum information into the superposition of qubit states and start in the initial nanomechanical state, and start with qubit state and state with zero points. Then Nanomechanical cat states are more difficult to operate with on their own, but they have much longer experience times. So in principle, we want to use them as a storage. And when we transduced quantum information from COVID, now into this combination of this Z and minus Z coherent states, into this pure state, nanomechanical state, in principle, we can use we can use it as a storage of our information before processing it. Further on, uh, tools that we have at hand is controlling the bias voltage, controlling the gate voltage, this delta V, and using these coherent dynamics to build up coherent states, entanglement to, well, we will see what entanglement do mathematically, and we can use also uh, gate voltage, this delta V, to rotate the qubit states. Now we need to calculate oops. Of the model is just extension of the previous model, so this is the same Hamiltonian that we had before. Josephson term uh, thermodynamic oscillator coupling between two of them, and here is additional term which comes from this electric field which we have. It is you see here position dependent, and uh, all of them are you see functions of time, so we can switch them on and off in the way that we need, and this is what we will use. In a, in a, this creating the problem. Okay, <clears throat> so what is the time protocol of bias voltage and gate voltage manipulation? First, we want to form the entangled state of qubit and nanomechanical uh, coherent state. So we start with the initial state, as I said, 
from previous slide, turn on by its voltage, let it build the uh, coherent states, and we define the time TS, <coughs> define the time TS with the, uh, with the criterion that the superconducting phase at the time TS is integer number of 2 pi plus pi over 2. Let's say pi. Then we switch off by a voltage, and we will turn on uh, the gate board. Delta V will be different than zero. Okay, so at the uh, at the time, okay, from the time from the time zero to time TS, our wave function is you see this is entangled state, inseparable combination. This is one qubit state, one uh, coherent state, the other orthogonal qubit state, and the other qubit state with, with the quantum information and body design. Now uh, here, when we switch on uh, electric field. We will to rotate this and this will be to the same state. So, if we realize that it's possible, we will get this. So, this will be to this will be will end up as the same qubit, and it can be vectorized out. And what will leave it is exactly the cat state with amplitudes a plus and n minus with quantum information from the beginning encoded inside. But now we need to go through this process. I will not explain this. Really, this is. Very general calculations, Sergei again, Pauline insisted on this generality. I will just say that we calculated the time evolution operator for the first stage, the time evolution operator for the second stage, and it really, uh, and when we apply all of them to the initial state, we end up in this, with this wave function. This is in general entangled state. We have some E3 plus E2 minus qubits, and this uh, nanomechanical. Coherent states. This is a definition. This is not very important to 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 visit just structural state. Now, what we can do under conditions that electrostatic uh, energy, of electric field, is small comparing to mechanical energy, that the coherent states are well developed. So this is a shift of the coherent state. We can define the time moment, the offset of TS. We call it T tau star. Fulfilling this condition, at the moment tau star, we see that the structure of wave function exactly reduces to what we want. So this is the same qubit, and what is left here is exactly the pure nanomechanical state. Schematically, what we do, we start with the system in the ground state, then we involve them in the opposite direction. Opposite direction. This is this pi over two state here. Qubits are the opposite state. Then we switch off uh, the bias voltage, turn on electric field, and now use this pair. So this state, this qubit, will rotate in the half plane with positive x. So it looks like one sign in this rotation. The other qubit will rotate. In the half plane with negative x, so it will rotate in the opposite direction. Maybe they will end up in the same state. If we didn't use that possibility, they would rotate in the same direction. We would never be able to single out this state out and get pure nanomechanical state. So this is a trick that we have to realize when operating. Okay. Uh, to track this, what is what is going on, we again calculate Wigner function. I will not go into structure. I see that the time is already uh, coming. I will just show the result. So for time t bigger than ts, so uh, after we finish with the first stage of our uh, evolution, what we get, you see, this is maximally entangled state. Wigner function doesn't produce any interference pattern. Now the interference pattern for the Time offset a little bigger develops in reaches some maximum value, then it disappears again. So what the system does in fact is to oscillate between maximally entangled and the pure state. If you want, you can when it is when it is pure, you can stop. You can switch off electric field and keep that state further on up to the decoherence time. To do it and see it better, it is uh, the best way, the most precise way to calculate entropy of entanglement. Again, it is done uh, taking the calculating the eigenvalues of the reduced density matrix. Again, let's skip the formalism and let's see the result. So <clears throat> entropy of entanglement, this is TS here. And now as the time passes, 
we have that entro uh, entanglement entropy oscillates goes to zero. So this is the pure state. It is our moment t star rises up again, oscillates goes to zero, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Entropy entanglement uh, of entanglement is maximal, possible maximum for two level system. It is logarithmic two if the cat state involved in the story in this story is symmetric. If it is not symmetric, this amplitudes are different, then it is not logarithm two, but still it has a zero at the same position. So stopping evolution, the switching of electric field here, you can deal with the, with the pure state, pure nanomechanical mechanical state. This so far has been published. Now, finally, the, the last step, it is still the area of open questions. The words quantum networks, the words transmission or transduction, but transmission of quantum information it is different than transduction. Transmission means we have two points of space and you transmit quantum information between these two points, between these two, between two qubits, for example. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the suggestion of quantum network. So we have N terminals with Cooper pair boxes and they are all attached to the same vibrating string, vibrating in the nth in excited mode. So <clears throat> I have explained how this works. The same string is what will provide entanglement between these terminals. So we see we have one oscillator and then all these other uh, terminals are just some of the previous components of previous Hamiltonian that I have explained. We can wire them separately, so each of them can be wired separately, so we can at need switch on, switch off voltages, electric field, etc., etc., to do what we want to do. So, two examples. <clears throat> two terminal network using second excited mode. You can, for example, use this for transmission of quantum information between two qubits. For qubit one, you see it is R state up plus B state down. If the second qubit is passive, here it is the same. And then you transmit it, so the first qubit is passive, you transmit it to A, second qubit up, to B, second qubit down. Or three terminal set. Quantum information is here, encoded in the first qubit, and then you end up in this type of state. This is called so-called three qubit protocol. It is important for the theory of quantum error correction. This is one of the ideas that we have. It is known as a bit flip code. Okay, now let us stick to this two terminal setup. I have two slides uh, and 10 minutes to be done in time. Okay, <clears throat> what we do with the two terminal set? How will we transfer this information from one qubit to the second? So we have the starting initial state that I explained. It is the state with a up, b down, and the second one is in the same state with zero, with a mechanical state with zero points. We apply this protocol that I have shown a few minutes ago, and what we get, we single out the same bullet state, and we end up in the nanomechanical head state with quantum information inside. Then we apply the backwards protocol, but on the second qubit with opposite bias voltage. And what we will get, it is, you see, quantum information encoded in the second qubit and end up in the depopulated coherent state, the shift will push them towards mechanical ground state. Here I will end my presentation, but yesterday, the day before, I we were working here for one week, like here, we got the result, we actually calculated it. So I, oops, sorry. I apologize for this picture. It is generated yesterday. I had no time to, to, to draw it in the better way, but this is actually the time protocol for operating two qubits to achieve exactly what I want. So <clears throat> we start with the, this initial state, zero exponents, EY plus EY minus, it is the quantum information in first qubit. The second qubit, it is in EX minus state. So the second one, when we switch on bias voltage on the first one, second one bias voltage is zero. The second one is not affected by Hamiltonian because sigma one, sigma x, this is the eigenstate of sigma x, so it is just inert with respect to this. Then, after n periods of evolution, uh, nanomechanical coherent states are, are developed and this state remains the same. 
Then what we do, we apply after end periods on both qubits. Here it's not necessary, but we will do it. There is no problem to do it. We apply something like delta function in bias voltage to increase the phase by pi over two. Why? And then we switch off the bias voltage. So the phase is constant. See, here is phase, it increases pi over two, and then it is constant. We want to kill, we want to kill the influence of this guy here to perturb our qubit seconds. Interaction for this, this is one period, it is neglected here. Interaction term is neglected. So what happens during the uh, after and so this is quarter of the period. We just wait here. We have unitary rotation. So after quarter of the period, we, we see that the same states are rotated to, from this position. One is rotated here, and the other one is rotated here. OK. Now we switch on electric field. And we want to rotate uh, this qubit to ex minus, and this qubit also to ex minus. This rotation generates some phase. But we also apply electric field on the second qubit. And from ex minus both of them on ex minus, we want to rotate the first one into ey plus and the second one to ey minus to transfer quantum information in the superposition. Now, this phase also appears, but we have electric fields in our hands, and we can put the condition and fulfill condition that this phase disappears by putting electric fields opposite to each other. First qubit up to second qubit opposite the electric. Okay. Then we are uh, doing that during half a period. So one is rotating in the negative half plane, the other is rotating in positive half plane. I can explain how we do it. And then the last quarter of period, this here and here, we do nothing, just let them rotate. And here we cancel this pi over two, cancel this pi over two to uh, kill the influence of interaction in this long period. This this and periods more to wait. Okay, so this is, and then here we keep the bias voltage on first qubit zero, but apply minus, minus value of VB on the second qubit. And what you do is to, you see, it is the state now here. There, one is here, the second is here, this state and this state. We, as I said, colloquially depopulate this coherent state because the shift is in the opposite direction, and we end up in the ground state. And the state of Chilton first loop is the same, while the quantum information is recorded into the second loop. And this is exactly what, what I wanted to achieve. So this is the end of my talk. And by this, uh, me and my bipolar cat, thank you for your attention. Very much. So we're coming to this question. Uh, I'm ask you a question. You use some very special picture and presentation. What do you mean when you say that you rotate qubit? What rotate qubit? Uh, rotate qubit state. Time evolution operator, which has sigma something matrix in the exponent and some time but, but qubit is the how can they rotate what what they rotate you you do level state and you uh, it, it, it means no no it's it's not physical rotation it is to go from for example uh, e x to e y or e x to e z e -X, what is e x it is the eigenstate of Pauli matrix this is the basis in which i present okay things. so after evolution so you have some uh, eigenstate of uh, e y of matrix sigma x yes uh, after after which evolution no there is initially, 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 initially you you have yes i have i have uh, okay in, after initial evolution, I no, have no. for second qubit, it is the eigenstate of sigma x. Yeah, first the, qubit is eigenstate of sigma y. So, so you say that you do something, yes, an eigenstate of uh, sigma x mm -hmm. after some evolution can become, I. it's not I. More eigenstate, no. but now it's some new state, mm -hmm. which is actually eigenstate of sigma 
In my opinion, the nature of switching off and on electrical bias voltage is kind of noisy operation, which, is, uh, which demands some time. And, uh, is it uh, important for your discussion? Yes, discuss? yes, it is. Uh, I didn't have see due to the time we did simulations even for that month. Yet. The last guy did these simulations and. Uh, uh, he, uh, what is the consequence of this Tangens hyperbolic, for example, uh, switching order of voltage? The consequence is that uh, head states are not symmetric anymore. So you get different amplitudes of that. But, but if you do it within 10% of your mechanical period, it is okay. Something like that. This is the result of this simulation. But the question is, is uh, 10% of mechanical period. Yes, yes, yes. So you know, it is it's, 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 okay, it should be quite short. Yes, the yes, problem, my problem is the comparison is, is very short. Yes, yes. The problem is that it is not a problem to do a fast electronics. You can do it in, in, in 10 picoseconds, but you cannot control voltage up to 0.1%. And this you have to pay. I have I spoke to experimentalists in Zagreb. He told me that he, if he really would work hard, he he, he would do it. But uh, constructing his own device, he was trying to find some commercial device. He said he would construct his own device with the help of some really skilled guy. It is a difficult thing. It's not so easy. More questions. If not, I should thank you very much for a very nice.